Hey everybody, this is a short video to show you the basics of glazing. So the first thing you want to make sure is that your piece is bisque fired. Oops. It will kind of resonate when you tap it like that. It will not break down in water now. The particles of clay are now sintered or stuck together, although they're not vitrified or turned to glass. It's still porous. We do this so that we can um, dip it in a bucket of glaze material without it falling apart. So it's bisqued. Now you need to make sure that you dust it off carefully with a little bit of water. So I squeeze most of the water out of my sponge and I wet down the surface, take off the dust. And this little bit of water also helps the glaze to adhere. All right, you wanna do the inside too. If you see any little pieces that are stuck that you wanna remove, you could try using your rib, or if you need to, use a little bit of sandpaper carefully. Obviously you wanna wear a mask, which we all are doing, uh, and do it over the trash can, and then dust all those sand particles off. Okay, so it's dusted, it's bisqued, and the next thing I need to do is to wax the piece so that the glaze doesn't melt and adhere the piece to the shelf in the kiln. So I have kind of a natural foot on this, you can see here, and I'm gonna glaze all of that. When you're first starting a glaze, um, starting to glaze or learn a glaze, you wanna make sure that you're kind of conservative with how much glaze you put on because you don't know that glaze and it might be a glaze that runs a little bit. So um, in the Raku kiln, sometimes we fire a little bit hot. I would try to make sure that you put a little bit more wax. Don't glaze right down to the very bottom of the piece. So I'm gonna stop in that natural transition where the foot kind of moves from the uh, bottom of the pot into uh, a ring here on the bottom. And I'm also going to glaze the inside of the foot ring, which I would recommend that all of you do initially until you get a little more control with the glazes that you're using. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is wax the bottom. The wax helps the glaze, uh, it resists the glaze, so it keeps it from sticking, although it's not perfect. You will still need to wipe any glaze that adheres to the wax off. All right, I'm gonna stir it up a little bit, and I wanna make sure to take most of the wax, let me see if I can, off of the brush, really kind of wipe it on the side of the container. Now be really careful with the wax because if you drip it on a part of the pot, you can't get it off. You prob probably will need to re-bisque fire it to melt that wax off. So you wanna be careful also that your hands are clean. Don't get wax on your sponge or on your fingers. Make sure you wash your hands well so that doesn't happen. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little smear on the bottom here. And you can see my wax looks kind of purple and it has food coloring in it so that I can see it because my clay is white and the wax is clear typically. And so this allows me to just sort of distinguish where I put it so I don't put it on too heavily or uh, in the wrong place. So I'm kind of watching my lines, making sure it's on there pretty well. And I didn't put too much on so it's not pooling in any place. If you have a big pool of ours is green, green wax, then you're gonna have to wait for it to dry because we don't want that wax to get mixed in to uh, the glaze itself. All right, so I'm just going to let it sit for a little while and dry and then you want to try to wash out your brush fairly quickly because this wax drying in your brush is sometimes a bear to get out and I use a little bit of hot soapy water to do that. So go ahead and do that now. I want to talk just a little bit about the idea of using wax as a resist for the glaze. Just like on the bottom of the piece, the wax uh, will prevent the glaze from sticking readily. And so I think I might like to try to use the wax as a resist on this piece for raku firing. In raku firing, any place where we have wax is gonna be exposed clay. And the exposed clay, when it's immersed into sawdust at the end of the firing, uh, will turn black as the carbon penetrates the clay body. So you can think about that as a nice uh, opportunity for creating some kind of patterning on your piece. You can um, paint the wax very loosely or you can do it in a very specific pattern. I think I'm gonna try to do just some little circles all over the form. Now, if the wax is too thin, it probably is not going to resist very well. It's kind of an imperfect resist. But I'm gonna go ahead and paint a whole series of circles all over this form here. And then when I glaze it in the Raku glaze, it won't stick in those places. All right. You can also use uh, masking tape as a resist. That works very nicely. I think in the piece that I showed you in the studio um, that was kind of like a little rock form, I had used masking tape to create a resist so that the glaze didn't stick. All right, so anytime you do a wax resist decoration, 
if you can see that. Um, you want to let it dry for a little while. Ideally, in fact, you might want to let it dry for an entire day. Um, it will work better if you really let it dry more. All right, so I'm going to let that set for a little while, and we're going to go back to the next step on glazing. Okay, in this step, I'm going to show you how to prepare your glaze. So you make sure that your pot was bisqued, you wiped it with a damp sponge, and you waxed at least the bottom and maybe other areas um, to resist the glaze in a decorative way. But now you need to make sure that your glaze is ready. So we need to make sure that we check the consistency and that we stir the glaze very well. So we have a bunch of tools that we use for stirring the glaze, and one is this electric drill. And we keep it in water and that keeps it rinsed out. Make sure that you're careful not to touch the moving blade. Um, and remember that's electricity and water, so be careful when you're working around the glaze. But what you want to do is you want to take it out, and don't spin it while it's out of, out of the bucket, and put it down in the bucket and stir it up. Then I take it out and I can rinse it in the water and it just sits in the water on the corner of the um, wooden table in the studio. So um, I want to make sure that I got all of the glaze material mixed into the glaze here and that I don't have any lumps on the bottom. I usually just kind of check it with my hand and that looks fine. Now the raccoon glazes that we're going to use in the first project are in smaller buckets, more along the sides of my water bucket here. And so it wouldn't be appropriate to use that large drill to mix that up. We have a couple of small immersion blenders that you could use. They're hanging on the pegboard opposite the sink in the glaze area. But you could also simply use a hand tool, something like this. And you just want to whisk it up, mix it for a few minutes, really make sure that it's well mixed. All right, and then one thing I always do is I um, try to sieve my glaze if I feel like there's any little chunks of um, bisque wear or hair or um, just contaminants. And you want to get a sieve. These sieves come in different mesh sizes. They look like this. And you want to put it over a clean uh, bucket. And it's best if it will really kind of sink down in there a little bit rather than just sitting on the top because the glaze can be heavy and you want to make sure that you get all of the lumps out of the glaze. So my glaze that I use, typically this one here, it's, it's a white glaze and it tends to clump up a little bit. So each time I begin to glaze, I always sieve it to make sure that it's the right consistency. Oops, see how it's kind of falling over? You don't want that to happen. My bucket's a little small here. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of push it through with my hand. And then you'll want to rinse these out in the sink fairly quickly. Okay, that's kind of a lot of glaze in there. I think I'm going to pour it back into my big bucket so that I don't spill it. All right. There are lots of different ways of applying glaze. I like to apply the glaze either dipping or spraying. You can also pour the glaze for this first project. Um, Painting the glaze uh, can be an effective way of getting a small amount of glaze uh, in a very specific area, but it tends to be uh, uneven. So if the glaze changes colors with thickness, that will happen on your piece. It's also easy to put it on too thinly. So I, I recommend usually that you do that over another glaze as a way to um, get a third glaze in the layering of two glazes. Okay. Okay, so now I'm ready to apply my glaze. And there are a couple of different ways that you can dip and pour. If you want just one glaze on your pot, you can simply hold it with as few fingers as you think you need to really keep it steady, and then dip it right down in the glaze and come back out. You wanna let all the drips kind of stop, and then you wanna set it down and let it dry. And don't touch it for a few minutes until all of the glaze absorbs into the clay body. All right, if you want to have fewer fingers on it, you can also use these dipping tongs, but you do need to be careful. My piece is kind of thin, and sometimes I'll end up breaking them with the dipping tongs. Uh, so I want to be a little bit careful, but you do, if you want to try this, just hold it carefully like this, and then dip it down in. Make sure that you hold the, the open part of the vessel 
uh, so that it will fill up and then you want to dump it out. All right, but I think I'm going to show you how to do it with your fingers, kind of a low-tech method. So I'm just going to pinch it here with two fingers. Um, so my glaze is really well stirred, but I will just go ahead and give it another stir. Some of the glazes are going to have a tendency to settle out more quickly, and you always want to stir right before you glaze. And then I'm just going to dip it in, one, two, three, and pull it out, one, two, three. And look, my wax resist worked really nicely. Can you see where it um, resisted? The places where I put uh, the wax. Now it did stick in a few places. I need to make sure that I clean that off of the bottom. I always say wipe your bottom. Um, but it's sometimes nice in a glaze to leave the drips that stick to the wax on the pot itself um, if, if you like that effect. So th there will be a layering of glaze. Um, well actually not in this part because we put wax right there uh, on the bisque layer. You can use this technique uh, between layers of glaze, but you do need to be mindful not to put too much glaze on a piece. Um, and if you leave the drips on the wax when you've got two, two glazes layered, then this second glaze will kind of be a nice uh, layered glaze on top of the one underneath here in the waxed areas. Okay, so it dried pretty quickly. I can now touch it and I don't have to worry about smearing it. Uh, if it's taking a while to dry, then you can just let it sit for a little bit until you can touch it without making a mark and messing it up. If you feel like you did a poor job glazing, don't panic and start rubbing it because then you'll make more of a mess. All right, so I've got a couple places where the glaze didn't stick, like where my fingers were. Anyway, you can imagine if you can't see it. And so I'm just gonna dip my finger down in. I'm gonna dab the glaze. I'm not gonna rub, but just dab it. You can use your brush. My glaze is a little thin, and so I'm just gonna let it pool there for a minute and not turn it over. Just let it kind of soak in for a second. So some glazes will actually turn colors if the thickness is, is varied and others are more forgiving um, and really stay the same. So this is something to notice in the test tiles in the glaze uh, room before you, uh, before you apply it so that you can get a sense of where it, what it's gonna look like where it's thick and thin. All right, so now I'm gonna wipe the glaze that's stuck to the wax here on the bottom and I'm gonna leave the little um, drops of glaze that stuck to the wax on the side of the piece. All right, and that looks pretty good. All right, and so now I have another piece that has a clear interior uh, and exterior, and I think I'd like to try to do, for example, two glazes. I'm not gonna actually put two glazes on it now, but I'm gonna give you a sense of how you might apply two different glazes to your piece. So I have a little crunchy piece inside this mug that I'm gonna kind of throw away. Now, um, I want to pour the inside before I pour the outside because it's hard to get the glaze out of the interior without um, having a few drips on the outside and then if there are any drips I can just kind of clean those off. So again, I'm going to kind of mix up my glaze and I'm just going to pour it in. I'm not going to go all the way to the top, but I'm going to just go close to the top and then I'm going to pour it out by turning it. As I pour it out and what that does is it helps get the entire inside of the glaze I have a few little drips here on the outside and you can leave those or if you want to remove them now it's a good time to do that now sometimes your lip is going to be uh, really symmetrical and flat and so if, you, if it is you can also now do the next layer in, a, in um, a different glaze by pushing the glaze down in straight. It should create a vacuum and you'll just get a little bit of glaze that will come on the interior of the, of the, of the pot, but mostly you'll just push the glaze right up toward the foot and then I would stop there. Now this one, as you can see, I kind of cut the lip so it's not flat and so it probably is going to get a lot more glaze inside. So instead of doing that, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand down inside the pot and then I'm going to hold it and imagine this is another color and I'm going to dip it close to the lip. I'm not going to go all the way up because I may end up having the glaze run down inside. You can always wait till it dries and like gently scrape it off. But I think what I'll do is I'll um, just dip it down in there and then I might paint the part of the rim that I miss. All right. So again, I'm going to stir my glaze. All right. And I'm just going to gently, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to kind of push it down in here and I'm going to try to get the handle and go close to the edge without going inside. All right, I did a pretty good job. I don't always do a good job there. All right, and it looks like the wax is working fairly well. There are a few places where it's still stuck, and I'm just gonna let it sit. See how it's kind of glossy? I don't know if you can see that. Uh, I need to let it 
sit for a little while before I go back and touch it up. So I'll then wipe off the wax and then I'll use my brush to dab glaze around the areas that I missed. You can also, if you like, to paint another little bit of glaze uh, over as a decorative element. That's a nice, time, a nice way to use painting. So for example, for Raku, the clear glaze is going to give us a kind of a white looking effect with black cracker marks. But if you wanted to paint one of the copper glazes over it and with some brushwork, you could try that. You could even do a little wax decorating now over the first layer of glaze. And then you could paint a little bit, let it dry, and then paint a little bit of glaze over the top of that. So uh, experiment and have fun. Good luck.